Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Arun and in today's video we are going to discuss about Cloud Foundry, SAP Neo and SAP Kima runtime services that are offered as part of SAP Business Technology Platform which is also called as SAP BTP. If you are interested to get an introduction to SAP BTP then please check out my other video. I have provided the link to that video in the description below. But before that I just wanted to quickly let you know something. If you are a regular visitor to my YouTube channel, you might know my channel used to be called as Let's Chat SAP. But SAP reached out to me recently and said that I'm not supposed to have the name SAP in either the title of my YouTube channel or in my blog. So I changed the name of my YouTube channel to ERP is easy and the name of my blog from Let's Chat SAP.com to ERP is easy.com. Hopefully this change shouldn't affect what we are trying to achieve here which is to collaborate and learn about different types of SAP applications. Anyway, now let's get into the topic. So firstly, what is SAP Cloud Foundry? Cloud Foundry is an open source platform that is governed by Cloud Foundry Foundation. It is not proprietary to SAP. Anyone can download it and use it for free of cost. SAP BTP also provides Cloud Foundry as a service. But since it is hosted on SAP BTP, you need to pay for the service offered by SAP. Not just SAP, but Cloud Foundry is offered as a service by so many other cloud providers like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, IBM, etc. So now the question is, what is the purpose of Cloud Foundry? You can use Cloud Foundry to build, deploy and run different types of software applications that are built using different types of programming languages. Let's take a step back and consider it this way. Before Cloud Foundry was introduced, if you have to build multiple software applications, you need to install different types of software either on your laptop or on a server. You need to install things like code editors, integrated development environments like Eclipse, databases, security, and all those sort of things. So it was complex and developers were spending a lot of time on the administrative tasks instead of concentrating on coding. But Cloud Foundry offers runtimes, business services, programming languages, libraries and services all in one place. So instead of installing and maintaining multiple software, all you need to do is make use of Cloud Foundry as a service and all the admin tasks will be taken care of by the Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry supports different types of programming languages like Java, Node.js, Go, PHP, Python, etc. And as I mentioned before, it can either be hosted on-premise or on a cloud infrastructure offered by companies like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and all those sort of companies. Now, in the context of SAP, developers can use the Cloud Foundry runtime service that is available within SAP BTP to build new software applications and use the API library offered by BTP to integrate their new software application with SAP on-premise and SAP cloud applications. I will repeat it. So in the context of SAP, developers can use the Cloud Foundry runtime that is available within BTP to build new software applications and they can use the API library offered by BTP to integrate that new software which they built using Cloud Foundry with their uh, existing SAP on-premise or SAP cloud applications. That's what the Cloud Foundry service within SAP BTP is used for. Hopefully it made sense. Otherwise, please let me know in the comments and I will try to explain it in more detail. Now, moving on, what is SAP Neo? SAP Neo is also a runtime service that is available within SAP BTP. It is very similar to Cloud Foundry but Neo was developed by SAP and it is not open source, so it's proprietary to SAP. Using Neo, developers can create HTML5, Java and SAP HANA extended application services, but it doesn't allow a bring your own language offering as Cloud Foundry does, and it can only be hosted on SAP infrastructure and not others. The types of programming languages one can use in Neo is also limited, as you can see on the slide, Hence, when compared, Cloud Foundry is a better runtime environment for developers to build their applications. SAP is also phasing out the new environment. 
So we can safely say the future is Cloud Foundry. Just to summarize the difference between Cloud Foundry and Neo, Cloud Foundry supports a variety of programming languages, but Neo only supports a handful of programming languages. Cloud Foundry can be hosted on any uh, premise, on premise or on any cloud infrastructure, but Neo can be hosted only on SAP infrastructure, whether it is on SAP BTP or SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud. And Cloud Foundry offers bring your own pro programming language. So say for example, you would like to build a software application uh, using a particular programming language, which is not offered as a standard out of box in Cloud Foundry, then no problem, you can just download those libraries into Cloud Foundry and start programming that particular programming language which you would like to use. But SAP Neo doesn't provide any of these kind of services. And uh, Cloud Foundry is open source. So if you want to use it on your own laptop or something like that, you can just download it from Cloud Foundry Foundation and install it on your laptop. And there is no cost involved. And uh, if you just want to host it on any other infrastructure as a service provider, all you need to do is just pay for the infrastructure as a service that you're using. But the Cloud Foundry platform in itself is open source and free. But uh, SAP Neo is a SAP proprietary and you need to pay in order to use SAP Neo. All right, so now moving on to SAP Kima. Uh, but if we need to talk about Kima, then first we need to talk about Kubernetes and containers. So let's go backwards and start with container first. Back when the container concept was not available, businesses used physical servers to run their applications. In a physical server, there is no mechanism to define the resource boundaries for the apps. Uh, which caused problems with resource allocations. For example, if numerous apps are running on a physical server, then there may be times when one application uses up the majority of the resources, which lowers the performance of other applications, right? Running each and every application on a different physical server uh, would be a fix for this particular problem. However, due to resource underutilization and the high cost of maintaining multiple physical servers, this model was not easy to scale. So later on, virtualization was introduced as a solution to this problem. Virtualization enables you to utilize the CPU of a single physical server to operate numerous virtual machines. Applications can be added or changed simply, hardware costs are decreased, and virtualization improves resource usage on physical servers and scalability as well. But on top of the virtualized hardware, each virtual machine functions as a complete uh, machine running all of its parts, including its own operating system. So there was still some level of complexity involved as the applications that are developed on a VM were tied to the operating system that particular VM is running on. So then comes the containers. While containers and virtual machines are similar, in the containers, the operating system can be shared among the applications. So containers are therefore seen as lightweight and less complex to run when compared to virtual machines. So similar to a virtual machine, a container has its own file system, the share of CPU, memory, process space, and more. But they are decoupled from the underlying infrastructure. They are portable across clouds and operating system distributions. Containers have become popular because they provide all these extra benefits when compared to a physical server or a VM. So we talked about containers and now let's take a look at Kubernetes before jumping into Kima. So what is Kubernetes? Some people call it Kubernetes, but you know, they say Kubernetes is the actual pronunciation. But anyway, um, we talked about how applications can be bundled and run effectively using containers. But imagine if there are thousands of these containers and you must manage all these containers that run the applications in a production environment to prevent downtime. For instance, a backup container needs to start if the main one goes down and things like that, right? But wouldn't it be simpler if a software handed all this behavior? That's where Kubernetes comes into play. Kubernetes is a framework to execute distributed systems robustly. It handles application scaling and failover, offers deployment patterns and more. Now finally, what is Kima? SAP BTP Kima is a fully managed Kubernetes runtime that is based on an open source project. 
So we discussed about how containers can help build and run applications on any platform. And if there are multiple containers, then Kubernetes can help manage those containers to provide scalability and failover services. But what if the applications inside the containers need to communicate with other applications in the outside world? That is where Kima comes into the picture. It is an extra integration tissue on top of Kubernetes that helps us to do a couple of things. One, expose the APIs from the containers so that external applications can integrate and as well as allow the applications inside the containers to consume APIs and events from other external applications. So basically it facilitates the integration between the apps in, uh, in the container and the other apps outside of the container or outside of the system uh, as a whole. So on top of facilitating integration, Kima also provides additional services like security, monitoring and tracing. So to summarize, let's visualize what we discussed so far. So you build software applications using either Cloud Foundry or SAP Neo. The applications you build can be placed inside a container or multiple containers. Containers are managed by Kubernetes runtime. And then Kima provides an additional integration layer on top of Kubernetes that allows your apps inside the container to integrate with the world outside or applications outside. All right, so now we have reached the end of the video. I have also provided all this information in a written format in my blog. The link is available in the description if you'd like to check it out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment and I will respond to you. Please like and share the video so that it will reach as many people as possible. And also please subscribe. Uh, thank you and see you soon in another video.